everyone and welcome to our first video of 2022. Now it's been several months between our last video and this one and the main reason is that my wife and I actually put up our house for sale at the end of last year and we moved to a new location. But at this location, we have a dedicated studio space, which you can see behind me. Now we're only in the process of getting it built right now, so it's still a work in progress. And over the course of the coming months, you'll be able to see stuff change behind me and hopefully get better, sound quality, lighting get better, and so on and so forth. So quick introduction to the studio. We're really, really glad to be here. We're glad to be making videos again. And so let's dive right in. If you've been following along with our content, you'll know that somewhere towards the end of 2020, I decided to move from using a plate carrier setup to a chest rig setup. I've been using plate carriers for many, many years since I got my first Cyraz back in 2007. And then in 2020, I decided to take the plunge into chest rigs and I've been using one ever since. So I thought today that we would go into sort of the decision making and the reasons why I moved from my plate carrier to my chest rig and hopefully give you some ideas for yourself to see about upgrading your own setup. And then I'll talk a little bit about where I am with all of that today. So let's get to it. So as I said in the introduction, I had been using plate carriers for many years, since 2007, all the way up until late 2020. I started off using a Cyraz, it was a Coyote 10 Phantom Cyraz, and it was a reproduction Cyraz, obviously. And I used that for many years until probably around 2012 or 2013, where I moved to a smaller setup, which was um, a Fly LBT 6094 reproduction. And I used that for many, many years, probably until a about 2018, at which point I got a JPC reproduction and I wore that until 2020. That's probably likely the case with many airsofters. Most of us are trying to emulate some sort of look that we see in TV, movies, or video games, and play carriers are a great way to do that. Fundamentally, they feel really cool when you put them on, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But they give you a very convenient way to carry your mags, and if they have molly, you can suit them to really whatever playstyle you have. And that's why the Cyraz and the JPC and 6094s stayed in service for us for so long, because we could really tailor them to do exactly what we wanted. As we've said before, for many, many years, we were looking at smaller and smaller and smaller plate carriers. We wanted to have the plate carrier set up, but we wanted less weight, we wanted less material, we wanted less bulk, and especially for myself, I actually ran training plates, weighted training plates. And so I really wanted to have the most minimalistic setup that I could find, mostly so that it would allow me to maneuver better around corners, shoulder my rifle better, not have a cordura nylon getting in the way when I'm maneuvering around pieces of cover and so on. I mean, we'd gone smaller and smaller and smaller. At some point you wonder, okay, well, do I even need these plates? Do I need the plate carrier? Can I go even smaller? And the chest rig really is the next step in that logical process that we followed. So let's look at the plate carrier setup that I ran. So this is the Fly Reproduction JPC that I wore for many years. The 1694 that I had was also by Fly and it was essentially set up the same way. So what you have here is a triple 10 speed pouch on the front for three mags as well as a kangaroo pouch for three mags inside, so I could carry six mags on the front. I also used an elastic cummerbund on the side here, as you can see, on both sides. And this was really great because it allowed me to really cinch in the plate carrier to my body, but because it's elastic, I could still breathe in and out, no problem in this direction. If you compare that to a typical Cordura nylon cummerbund, those are a lot more restrictive when you cinch them down. So this is what I wore for the last several years. On the back, it was relatively clear because I didn't want anything interfering with my sling. And I had my comms on here, which I have since transferred to my new chest rig, but essentially this was it. I didn't have any admin pouches and inside the elastic cummerbund, they actually had pouches here. So you can see that you could squeeze in a mag there or a radio or what have you. And that's basically how I ran it. Now my 1694, same deal, basically set up exactly the same way. And the Cyraz before that, once I started getting smaller and smaller, also set up the same way. I didn't have any pouches on the side or anything like that. So that was the JPC, the way that I had it set up. And as I mentioned, it was a fly, which means that it is a reproduction JPC. And the challenge with reproduction plate carriers is that for the most part, they generally only come in one size, which is size large. Now that might not be problematic for some people, but if you're like me, so you're five foot six or 168 centimeters tall, large is actually quite large. And for me, that meant that the plate was actually abutting with my belt line, which made it really hard for me to actually put anything on my belt. I could have a dump pouch, but I definitely couldn't wear a battle belt 
The other thing about airsoft plate carriers compared to real steel plate carriers is that in the real world, plate carriers will be heavier because they're carrying plates and all kinds of other equipment. In, in airsoft, they tend to be lighter. However, since they're modeled on the real things, they still have all the extra support that a real plate carrier would have. So typically you'll find thicker shoulder pads, you'll find really thick construction. And for our purposes in airsoft, that's not really necessary. And especially if you're like me and you're a little bit smaller, all that extra material can really get in the way. It can impede your shouldering or transitioning, it can get caught and stuff if it's not nice and tight to your body. And if you're using a large plate, and you have, let's say, a medium-sized body, that can be a little bit problematic. Now, you can certainly find some replica plate carriers that come in different sizes, maybe a medium or a small, or even an extra large for that matter. However, they're really rare, and when you go to an airsoft store, most of the stuff that you'll find will be one size fits all, which is great if you're a standard human, but if you're a little bit shorter like myself, or if you're a little bit bigger, you might find that it doesn't sit well on your particular body. So was this the end of the world? I mean, obviously not since I wore a plate carrier from 2007 to 2020, so 13 years. The thing is, if you'd asked me back then if I thought my plate carrier was holding me back, I would have told you, no, it's not. It's just the same as using anything else. But the thing is, I didn't really know, and I actually wouldn't know until I tried a chest rig and was able to compare how I performed with a chest rig versus a plate carrier to really tell you whether it was holding me back or not. And it's important for us, I think, not to make those assumptions, that we actually know things until we actually try it for ourselves. So that's what I did. At the end of 2020, late 2020, I decided to pick up a chest rig like for $40 as a bit of a trial. It was the same one that Chris had been using, a replica uh, D3CR. It's actually this one right here that, that I have. Um, and I found it for pretty cheap. It was about 40 bucks Canadian. And I thought, okay, you know what? I'm gonna wear this exclusively for the next few games to give it a fair shot, to really give it a fair shake. And it's really important when you're trying stuff out, not to just try it out real quick and then say for one game, you're like, oh no, I hate this and then move on. You need to give it a fair shake. You need to become proficient with it. And then based on that, you can make your informed decision as to whether or not it actually works for you. So that's exactly what I did. I picked up this chest rig. I set it up for myself. Now on this chest rig, as you can see, it's not molly or anything like that. All the pouches are static. The only thing that really I had to set up was the straps. Uh, it was a little bit too big for me. So I moved the straps in, I tightened them. I tied them down with some tape. I tightened the back on it, and then I wore two couple games. I found the difference pretty well evident in terms of the weight of the chest rig compared to the plate carrier. When I hit the field the first time, I felt that I was more agile, I was more nimble, I was way faster. Because I wasn't carrying you know, the extra 12 pounds of extra weight from the plate carrier that I had. The chest rig was certainly more nimble, but what I found is that it wasn't as tight to my body as the plate carrier. It tended to flop around a bit more and it was definitely not a stable reloading platform. The other thing about it is that I found that there weren't actually enough pouches on this. So it looks like there's tons of pouches, but in reality, you've got a double M4 mag pouch here. You've got a double M4 mag pouch here. On the edges, you have a weirdly shaped pouch that can only take an M4 mag at an angle. And then you have this pouch on the front here that has these elastics that can fit basically anything. And this is actually garbage. It's not useful. You can't index stuff into it. It's a real pain. So I never ended up using it. And then I had these two pouches up front here for pistol mags, but I don't use pistol mags, so they couldn't do anything. And then I had two utility pouches on the front, and these were actually great to have. One of them fit a multi-tool perfectly, the other one fit two batteries perfectly, so that was great. The way that I ended up running this ultimately was using a radio on, uh, inside this weird pouch on the side. I would run four mags here, and I would stuff a fifth one here, and that was it. So I was carrying five mags compared to the six plus the two on the side sometimes that I was carrying my plate here. So I was having a lot fewer mags. And for those of you who are on the Discord, you know I we joke about me shooting a lot. So five mags is, is a little bit borderline for the kinds of games that we play. So I ended up using this chest rig for about six months. And there were some things I really liked about it. I liked the fact that it was lightweight. I liked the fact that I could carry a little bit of extra stuff on my rig instead of in my pocket. So like batteries or multi-tool or what have you. But on the flip side, I actually really didn't like how it made me objectively slower at reloading because it wasn't as stable a platform compared to my plate carrier. So I kept using it for a little while and eventually one of the straps broke on the back and you can actually see the stitching went. Now I could have fixed it, but I said, you know what? There's some things that I don't like about this chest rig 
I want to try and find another chest rig that will allow me to correct some of those things. And where I ended up is with a Shadow Tactical chest rig, which is here. Now, this chest rig is made by Shadow Strategic or Shadow Tactical, and they are a real steel gear manufacturer. They make gear for police and military, and also, of course, for airsoft uses, and they're not very expensive. We had been very, very impressed by the quality of their BDUs. So uh, I know Chris and Johnny and a few other guys ended up getting uh, Shadow Strategic trousers as well as tops, and the quality is excellent. And so I said, well, I'll give this brand a try. And this piece of kit, I was actually extremely impressed with. The quality, the construction is excellent. It's not cheap reproduction quality. It does feel really nice. And so I like this one in particular because it had four mags wide on the front, which means it carried eight mags. It also has space on the side for molly attachments as well as on the front. Now, I didn't want to put anything on the front because double stack mags on the front is good enough, but I figured the molly on the side would be great for an additional pouch to carry my radio, a pouch to carry you know utilities like we talked about before. This rig was fully adjustable. It had lots of Velcro to make the straps as tight as you want to cinch them down so you don't have stuff flopping around when you hit the field. It also came with uh, very thick shoulder pads, which I removed, but if you're carrying a lot of gear, especially if it's real steel gear, you're going to want to have that extra padding because these straps can sort of dig into your shoulders. But for airsoft purposes, I just ditch them and I use this. And although I am extremely impressed with this chest ring, the problem that I had is that it was too big for me. Four mags on the front plus two side pouches, I really couldn't get my arms tucked in as tight as I wanted to come around corners and uh, maneuver around cover the way that we typically like to see. And that's not a fault of this particular rig. It's a, well, it's not really a fault, but it's a factor of me as a human, right? So I, uh, I, I really like this piece of kit, but it was not the right piece for me. I still have it. I think maybe for like a longer Milsim game, for example, if we ever play one, but for our purposes for like weekend skirmishes and stuff, this is, was really not it. So with that in mind, I decided it was time for me to start looking for a chest rig that was minimalist, but customizable. And after talking to the guys on the Discord and talking with Chaz, I settled on giving a shot to the TMC Micro Fight Rig, which is this rig right here. So I wanted something that was three mags wide, and this is exactly it. It also has the optional dangler pouch on the bottom, which allows me to carry some of the small items I've been talking about that I've gotten accustomed to wearing on my person, on my rig, rather than in my pockets. And it has a wingman pouch, which allowed me to put my radio right on my chest rig the way that I normally do, but in a position where it's more towards the front and actually allows me to tuck my elbows in right away. You can also see that it has wider straps. However, the straps are extremely thin. If you compare them to the straps on a JPC, for example, you'll notice that they're about the same width, right? But the thickness is very, very different. It's just a thin material. Now, it doesn't feel cheap or anything like that, but it is much thinner, much more lightweight, and it doesn't interfere at all when I'm shouldering my rifle. This particular kit also came with customizable options for the inside. So I could put, instead of six M4 mags, it has the insert so you can carry four 7.62 mags, so the, the larger mags or it also has a shotgun placard that you can have. You can also have a pouch on the outside and a bunch of other stuff. But I decided that for my purposes, all I wanted was the rig itself, as it is here, as you can see it, with the dangler pouch and the radio pouch. So this has been my main rig since middle of summer 2021, and I absolutely love it. A um, couple of things to note, my reloads from this rig are just as fast as my reloads from my plate carrier, which is obviously extremely important to me. Additionally, it sits very well on my body. It does not flop around. It doesn't require me to cinch it in super tight so that I can't breathe or anything like that. Um, and it does provide me all the utility that I'm looking for. So fundamentally, this has been an excellent, excellent piece of kit. And in a lot of ways, it just mirrors the same performance that I had from my plate carrier, just without the extra weight from the plates, right? I'm saving myself about 12 pounds with this particular setup. So if you're a smaller individual like myself, I would highly suggest that you check out something like a TMC microfight rig. It might be just what you're looking for. So all that being said, why did it take so long for me to jump into the chest rig world? Especially considering that my first chest rig, this one here, was only about $40. Well, there's a couple of reasons. And firstly, it's really fundamentally because I thought plate carriers looked cool. 
I loved the feeling of putting on my play carrier before a game. I thought it made me feel like a badass, like a tough guy, especially because I had those training plates in there. In my mind, I was doing this little bit extra that not everybody else was doing, and it made me feel sort of special and really cool. And that might sound ridiculous, but I'm sure that resonates with a lot of us playing Airsoft. I mean, we play Airsoft for fun. And if putting a plate carrier on is fun for you, then that's something that you want to do. If it makes you feel cool, then that's a good feeling. You should be doing all those things. So that's one of the reasons why I used it for so long, because I just really enjoyed it. So the other thing about plate carriers is that they do provide a little bit of protection from BBs. But when you think about it logically, like I did, you re realize that actually you don't get shot in the chest or the back a whole lot. I mean, it certainly does happen, and I have been shot in the chest and back since I've used my chest rig. However, it doesn't happen every game, and in fact, there are many games where I don't get shot anywhere near the torso, only in the legs or the helmet or the arms. So the amount of protection I was getting from my play carrier wasn't actually all that high, so it made sense to move to the chest rig from that perspective. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, I was extremely comfortable and proficient with my play carrier. It was a known factor, and if I switched to a chest rig, that would be disrupting the whole balance. I would be a liability for my team on the field as I started to relearn a lot of those things. It's like the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But the problem is, if we all believe that all the time, nothing would ever improve, nothing would ever change. I was absolutely stuck in this mindset, but it's very important to try out new things, give it an honest shot to see whether or not the new way of doing it is better than the old way. So looking back, do I miss using my plate carrier? Truthfully, I, I can't say that I do. It served me well for many years and I definitely don't regret using it, but knowing what I know now, I certainly wouldn't want to go back either. At the end of the day for us, improvement is all about small, consistent changes and looking at new drills or new ways of training is just as important as looking at the way that your gear suits your needs on the field. And for me, going from a plate carrier to a chest rig has made a world of a difference for my performance. Hopefully you found this overview of my plate carrier and chest rig setups over the years useful to you and your own development and growth. If you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, or if you want to keep the discussion going, come join us on Discord. The server link is in the description below. We'd love to have you join our multinational community. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.